Hi, Nick Davies here again, and this time I'm going to have a brief look at the technique used in conflict management, physical intervention and personal safety, which is known as contact and cover. Now, although I've put a picture of a security officer up here, this is not something which is restricted to the private security industry or the police exclusively. It's actually a very useful technique which can be used by any frontline staff whose role is to deal with a potentially violent service user, and here I'm talking school, care home, NHS staff or whoever. So without any further ado, let's have a look at what this is all about. So here we might have a situation where the service user, symbolised by the red circle, is starting to show signs of aggravation, possibly moving towards serious aggravation. The first member of staff on the scene, shown by this blue circle here, is therefore the first to make contact. Now in line with good health and safety practice, and in particular loan working guidance, there should be at least another member of staff present from both a personal safety point of view and also if there is as a last resort and if it's reasonable in circumstances a need to restrain. So whilst the first member of staff is communicating with a service user and hopefully using good conflict management skills and de-escalation strategies, staff member number two has positioned themselves at right angles or 90 degrees to number one, setting themselves back so as not to crowd the service user but still being in a position to maintain eye contact and a line of communication with number one. Now there are two very good reasons for this. The first being that it means that the service user may feel less threatened if two members of staff are not closing in too close to him or her, or even surrounding the service user with one of them say at the front and one at the back. And we'll see that there are other advantages to this as well in a second. The second reason is that number two is also in a good position to be able to monitor the situation in a type of um, overwatch being vigilant for any potential threats, especially possible weapons, which they may not see if stood behind or to the side of number one, and to take action to assist number one if needed. Now there's another advantage to number two being in this position, because if the communication between number one and the service user are not going well, and things begin to deteriorate, then number two could take over the reins, so to speak, sometimes also known as passing the baton, and being, begin communicating with the service user. At this stage, number one could take a step back effectively and then adopt the overwatch role which number two performed before. Now I'd hasten to add that the contact and cover approach is certainly not static, especially as the service user might move about, especially if they happen to be agitated, and the staff members will also need to move accordingly to maintain their positions. Now if it gets to the stage where tactical communications and conflict management skills and de-escalation strategies break down and the service user becomes so pumped up that they resort to violence or violent behaviour, then the advantage of contact and cover is that the staff members can move in pretty rapidly in order to apply some form of restraint. And this of course is all governed by the use of reasonable force in accordance with the law as to whether it's necessary and proportional etc. And just an aside, you might want to check out some of the other videos on this channel which talk about the law in the UK respect to reasonable force for more information. So let's say this instance, the service user decides to go for staff member one, thus making it necessary to go for a restraint. At this stage, number two can move in to affect the restraint, in this case to the left of the service user. Likewise, whilst this is going on, number one themselves could quickly move in, avoid any potential attacks of course, and affect a restraint on the right side, which would obviously be applied safely to regain control and until the service user calmed down, etc. The other possibility could be that in certain circumstances, where it might be either too dangerous or not reasonable to apply a restraint, and this might be the case, especially where one of or all of the staff members have not been trained in restraint for whatever reason, which in itself might be a health and safety issue, staff are expected to deal with potentially violent confrontations, then it may be more appropriate for staff member two to extract one to a safe location or vice versa. So in this case, instead of going for the restraint, number two mini moves across, takes hold of one, and takes them to a place of safety. Now, this is not limited to just two staff members, by the way, because there may be times when you have the luxury of more than two present. So say, for instance, you have three members of staff present, then two of them could be positioned as per the diagram, whilst the service user converses with number one. Now within this configuration, the baton can be passed between all members of staff, and if things do come to head, two can move in from the service user's sides in order to effect a restraint if necessary. So really that wraps it up for contact and cover. Um, hope you found that interesting. 
If you have any questions about this video or any of the subjects covered in the other videos here then you're very welcome to contact me on mail at nicholasdavis.com and I'll try and answer them as best as I can. In the meantime I'd like to say thank you very much for listening and I'll see you in the next video.